Today we're going to install Linux Ubuntu 7, just another flavor of Linux, and this installation CD is also a live CD, so it can run off the CD. We'll say start or install Ubuntu, that'll load the Linux kernel, and wait for our little Cylon line to go back and forth here. Um, other Linux operating systems that are on live CDs would include Fedora, uh, Red Hat's Fedora product. Um, I like Core 6 and Fedora 8, but they do have a live CD for both of those. And again, you can run the operating system right off the CD. It's kind of a unique ad advantage. Um, you don't have to install the operating system or modify the file system in any way. You can just run it completely off of the CD or the DVD. You can make your own live CDs with image files. Um, you know, with the applications that you like. This default one is, you know, pretty useful um, just as, as it is. I downloaded the ISO from Ubuntu's website. Um, right off the CD when you boot up, you have Firefox web browser, network connectivity, um, sound, uh, multimedia capabilities, um, office products, open office products, word processor, um, a command prompt. So it's kind of neat being on a portable live CD. Um, instead of carrying a laptop around with you or a computer, you could just take a live CD or a live DVD with uh, Ubuntu uh, 7.5 Stefan or you know Fedora Core 6 or Fedora 8, and boot up you know boot up right off of that live CD and run it on any workstation or machine in your network environment. That would allow booting from the CD-ROM. You may have to go into the BIOS and set it to boot from the CD or the DVD drive. Um, another uh, version of Linux that does this is Knopix, K-N-O-P-P-I-X, um, but in this case, probably my favorite two are Ubuntu and Fedora. Um, you know, not only can you run it live off the CD, you know, if you want to go to a public library or a friend's house, and that way you're not harming or changing their file system, you're just running it off a DVD or CD, but, um, you know, not only that capability is an advantage, but also um, it makes a great rescue CD because you can boot up and you can have security tools, um, repair tools. You can run FSCK or E2FSCK on the file system to repair file system damage. Um, you can mount drives and copy files from the internal file system to a removable drive. Um, you know, and it just, you know, it also kind of just gives you a versatility, sort of a try before you buy versatility. So, um, or if you have limited space, you may not, you know, you may have a, maybe a smaller hard drive or you don't have a lot of additional uh, hard drive space to add, you know, a swap partition and... Oh, by the way, notice, you know, in, in Vista, I had to actually go out online and download the sound driver. But you'll notice with both Fedora and Ubuntu, there are so many drivers that are built in that can work even booting off the live CD. As far as sound and video and NIC cards networking, it's pretty amazing. Um, all of the things that they've packed into, in this case, you know, what's less than a 700 megabyte CD image. Um, what were we talking about? But it, yeah, uh, uh, again, it just gives you some versatility in the sense that um, you can run the operating system, and if you don't have a lot of hard drive space, you can just, you know, pop the DVD or the CD in and run it right off the CD DVD and leave your other operating system untouched. Um, now, the downside of that is if you install... Debian packages under Ubuntu or RPMs under Fedora, um, it's not going to, you know, hold your changes. You would have to actually, you know, do that on a hard drive and then make an image and then burn it again because it's it's not writable media. It's you know, it's it's sort of a, in a read-only format. Um, now in this case we do have the partition space, so we want to install. Um, but before we do that, again, let's just take a quick look. Notice my sound driver is working, system clock, my net, uh, networking's up. All of this booting up the CD. I didn't have to download drivers. I didn't have to put a manufacturer's uh, CD in. I didn't have to, you know, check anything against the HCL. I'm going to go ahead and launch Firefox, and we'll just check the network access. And you know, again, this might be a useful tool running. I, I, you know, off of a live CD as as far as a rescue device or rescue CD because I can do research, I can download files. You know, not only can I repair the file system and, and, and copy information 
uh, you know, off the system onto removable drives. And there goes my dog. Let's go to Google real quick and, you know. Help me. <laughs> and then in this case, Firefox is uh, default installation there. But hmm, help me with my bra. What do you know? Help me, Bubby. Oh, anyway. Um, again, some of the other useful features. Um, the file system, you know, is mounted right out of the box. Um, all of this is running off of a CD or DVD. I've got a CD DVD creator, network browsing via Samba. You know, I can look at my network and what's going on there. Um. Again, this is the genome desktop. Here's my Windows network. Um, haven't installed anything yet. Haven't even touched the hard drive. Haven't changed anything. Multimedia, I can play music, um, watch movies. I have you know open, op open office functionality, word processor, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations. So it's kind of neat just to be able to run that off of a you know less than a 700 megabyte CD image. But we're going to go ahead and install it. So I'm going to click on install. And this could be a lengthy process, just you know, decompressing and then copying all of the content uh, from the live image install uh, CD to the hard drive. So um, we'll get this started, and then we'll kind of zip out and zip back in, um, you know, 10 minutes later when it's when it's done, just to save some time. Remember that we're limited to those 10-minute clips on YouTube. So um, I'll click on forward. I'll go with the defaults English in this case, um, Eastern Time Zone. Interesting. Since that Microsoft always defaults to the Pacific, they're in Seattle, but with Ubuntu, it's in Eastern Time Zone. Um, I'm gonna again just go with the defaults on my keyboard layout. For partitioning the disk, you can allow Ubuntu to partition the disk for you. Um, most of the time, it makes good decisions. If you have a multi-boot configuration, it will try not to destroy any data on NTFS partitions or FAT32, FAT16 partitions. Um, it'll try to add, even add those entries to the Grub uh, bootloader for you. So you'll be able to select those options and, and boot into the bootloader of that operating system later after you install Ubuntu. But to be on the safe side, is, you know, as long as you're pretty sure of what you're doing, you maybe want to select the manual option. That way you can be sure that if you have any you know, other partitions, NTFS, FAT16, FAT32, EXT2, EXT3 riser, um, that n no changes will be made in, unless you explicitly specify those changes. So I want to create a new partition table. I'm going to continue. A um, little warning there. Um, in this case, my free space I want to select. And then once I do, I want to create a new partition. Now the first thing I need to do is make a swap partition. Swap partition should be at least as large as the available RAM. I have 512 megabytes of RAM on this system, so I'm going to go ahead and add 512 megabytes of RAM. Now once I do that, the next thing I want to make is going to be a system root partition. So again, I'll select my free space. I'm going to say new partition under distrode. Primary, by default is CXT3, and there's some nice features there, but for compatibility issues or reasons, I want to go EXT2. If you have a multi-boot with NTFS, and um, as in my situation, you, you use an, a drive image tool to do your backups like Nova Store or Ghost. Um, I use Ghost with the dash IAL option. Um, it can do ext2 file systems, you know, pretty reliably, but ex the ext3 file system causes some problems with Ghost, especially in certain multi-boot uh, configurations with the master boot record. So I'm going to choose ext2. My mount point would be a forward slash. That's just the root mount point of the file system. And it will rescan the disks to reload my my new partition configuration information. And I'm going to go forward.